Mettre computer mais pour supply. Um, okay, so uh, once again we start from this assumption that uh, flows are balanced. So we've said flows are balanced. It means that the inflows into an employment equals the outflows. So that's uh, how we model our labor market. So what are our inflows into an employment? These are the people who lose their job. So the inflows are going to be S times L. This is equal to the outflows. We've just said the outflows are F of theta times U. Okay. So here what I'm interested in is the labor supply, uh, L, that we have here. So I'm trying to solve for L. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to keep this. F of theta, I can keep it. And what I'll do is I'll try to uh, eliminate the U. And I replace U by the expression of u as a function of employment. So what is unemployment? Unemployment is just the number of people in the labor force, h, minus the people who hold the job, l. Okay? So that's just using the definition of um, u. Okay, great. Then what do I do? Well, I can, again, reshuffle my terms to try to isolate everything that depends, uh, that involves l, which is what I'm trying to solve for. So here I can do s times l. I can bring this expression, this L here on the other side, so I'll have plus f of theta times L, and that's going to be equal to f of theta times h just by reshuffling. Okay, and then uh, this I can just factor the L out, so I have L times s plus f of theta is equal to f of theta times h, and then in the end I can get that L is equal to f of theta divided by s plus f of theta times h. Okay, and this L that I have here, it's actually my labor supply. So it's telling us given how much people want to work. So here, it's how many people want to uh, enter the labor force, h. So we take into account this. Uh, so you have H here that represents the number of people who want to work. Then we have this expression that depends on f of theta and s, so that represents just the flows on the labor market. So given the number of people who want to work and the flows that exist on the labor market, here is L is the uh, employment, the number of people who are employed that's going to prevent. So that's going to be a key, uh, key expression here. All right, uh, so that's a key result. And in fact, so this L here, because it describes the supply side of the market, you know, people who want to work and people who enter the labor market, we are going to call it the labor supply. So we put a S to denote supply. And you can see here the only variable that really involve, given that S is a parameter, H is a parameter, here the only variable is the tightness. So this only depends on tightness. So this now is our labor supply um, that, we are going to, uh, that we are going to use. Um, so what are the properties of this labor supply? It's going to be very uh, important to uh, to look at these properties. It's good to know that. Um, so let's, here we have the labor supply. Right, so let's draw a little diagram. So on the x-axis, we always put quantities. Here, the quantity of interest is employment. So we put L. Usually, on our y-axis, we put price, right, when we study market. But here, tightness is going to act as a price. So I'm going to put my tightness, my labor market tightness here. And here, this uh, quantity that I've put here, that's H. That's the maximum number of people who can be uh, employed, of course, the size of the 
labor force. Um, so now let's say I want to plot my labor supply. So you remember what the equation that we've just seen for labor supply? We just said that, uh, right, we just said that the labor supply was equal to f of theta divided by f of theta times h. Okay, um, so what happens when theta is equal to zero here? When theta is equal to zero, f of theta is also um, equal to zero, and as a result, ls of theta is equal to zero. So here we know that the labor supply is going to start here. Okay. And uh, then what happens? Uh, well, what we, can, uh, what we can show is that the labor supply is going to be increasing uh, in tightness. So what's the easiest way to show that? Uh, well, you can, uh, you can see it from your uh, equation. We're going to, uh, we can derive that pretty quickly. Here's the easiest way to do it. Uh, So the labor supply, I think the easiest way to see it, it's f of theta divided by s plus f of theta times h. This you can rewrite it as 1 over 1 plus s divided by f of theta times h, right? Now, what we saw when we studied the matching function is that uh, do you remember we saw that f of theta, which is a job finding rate, we saw that it was equal to the matching function evaluated at 1 and theta. Uh, so you can go back to the previous lecture and you'll see that. And uh, because the matching function is increasing in both arguments, this implies that f prime of theta is positive. Right? The job finding rate is increasing in tightness. When the market is tighter, you have lots of vacant jobs compared to the number of unemployed workers, so people will find jobs quickly. Okay? So here what we've just seen is that uh, this f of theta here is increasing in theta. Now we have, it's in the... Um, denominator of that fraction, s over f of theta, so the fraction s over, over f of theta is now decreasing in theta. But then that's in the denominator of the big fraction, 1 over 1 plus f of theta. So from this we learn that the big fraction, that big fraction here, that's going to be increasing in theta. Okay, Just using standard rules uh, on the monotonicity of function. And so here we learn that uh, our function or labor supply is going to be increasing in tightness. Okay, so now what I can do is I can I can draw an increasing function here, something like this. Okay, uh, and you can see that I've always put the labor the labor supply is always going to be less than the size of the labor force, h. How do I know that? Well, I can I've just uh, I've just showed you this expression for the labor supply, so we know that f of theta divided by s plus f of theta, that's always less than 1, right? And so what does that imply? This implies that the labor supply is always less than the size of the labor force. So this perspective we have on the labor supply does give us this property that the labor supply will be less than, uh, than the size of the labor force. Okay, so that's why I can draw it that way. And uh, the other thing that I've used here, you can see that I've, I've made the labor supply get uh, closer and closer to the size of the labor force as the tightness goes up. Well, that's because for most matching functions, what happens is that we assume that the limit of M and UV when U goes to infinity, so if you have infinitely many workers, it's going to be the same as the limit of the matching function when v goes to infinity and it's going to be infinite. So if you have uh, if you have infinitely many workers or infinitely many vacancies, your function is going to give you 
infinitely many match you know pair uh, pair unique times right so uh, so that's going to imply that the limit of m one theta when theta goes to infinity is infinite and uh, given what we've seen the definition that we have here of f of theta that's going to tell us that uh, the limit of f of theta when theta goes to infinity is going to be equal to uh, infinity okay and uh, so what that's going to imply is that the limit of s sorry excuse me the limit of f of theta over s plus f of theta as theta goes to infinity that's just going to be equal to one and from that we learn that the limit of the labor supply as theta goes to infinity is going to be h okay which explains why uh, why i've drawn the size of the labor force as an asymptote for the labor supply okay if we go back to our graph here okay so the labor supply is going to be uh, something like this okay it's going to look something like this and so what are the different things that we can see on the labor supply uh, well for any given tightness you have two things that are going to appear this amount and this amount so this amount here what is it well that's going to give us the number of so this is just uh, this is n this is just the number of people who uh, have a job for a given tightness and here what we have here it's h minus l so that you that the number of people who are unemployed for a given tightness and so this is for some tightness uh, theta here. So labor supply always tells you how uh, the number of people in the labor force is split between employment and unemployment. And so what you can see is that if your tightness is very low, say you're somewhere here, you're going to have a lot of uh, people who are unemployed here. Okay. So that's low theta, you have a large U. But um, if you have a high theta, something like this, then you're going to have a very small U, something like this. Okay, and so, um, so this labor supply is, is, is uh, quite nice. It's able to tell you for different level of tightness how much unemployment you have and how much uh, employment you have.